hitting against a wall or backboard is a really good way to improve in tennis, especially if you're trying to train your body to do something new. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to build your own backboard. And we're going to go over all of the materials, the cost, and how to put it all together. Coming up. What's up guys, Zach here with Grow Tennis and on this channel we're serving up easy and affordable ways to get more people playing tennis and mastering their fundamentals. So if you think the game of tennis is awesome and you want to help us grow the game, please share this with a friend and consider subscribing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at all of the materials that you'll be needing to get this project started. So the first thing you're going to need is an eight foot sheet of plyboard. When you go to Home Depot, you can go to the lumber department and ask somebody to cut the board for you. Just be sure to ask them to cut the board into four equal pieces and you should be good to go. You're also going to need six one and a half inch narrow utility hinges. And if you want to make the board portable like I did, you're also going to need some nylon cordage. So the tools you're going to need for this build is one power drill with a Phillips head bit. And you're also going to need a drill bit that's about the size of that nylon paracord and that's all the materials that you're going to need to make the actual backboard. So there are some additional materials that you're going to need in order to hold the board up in place. And this is going to change depending on your yard setup and the space you intend on using it. But first, let's go over how to build the backboard itself so that you can fold it up, store it easily, or take it with you to the courts. Step one, place your board side by side on a sturdy level surface. Make sure the boards are tightly placed together and as even as possible at the tops and the bottoms. Step two, place your hinges on the board at the top, middle, and bottom. Before screwing it in, definitely make sure that the folding end is facing upward. A quick tip here is that it's way faster and easier to pre-drill your holes first before actually adding the screws in. The next thing we need to do is add some handles to either board so that we can easily transport it around the yard. A good trick here is to center your two holes as best as you can in the middle of the boards. And the distance that you're putting these holes is going to be just a little bit wider than the width of your hand. Then you're going to thread your rope through the first hole and secure it by tying two basic knots. A good tip here is that the ends of the paracord can sometimes fray. So what you can do is you can take a lighter and singe the ends just a little bit. And be careful here because it is like melting plastic. And that'll make it a lot easier to get through the space and also tie your knots. Then measure your distance to your next hole and then add an extra foot or so before cutting your paracord. And then you're gonna tie the exact same knots on the other end while making sure to pull the rope where the handle is gonna be as tight as possible. Repeat that same process on the remaining boards. So now you have an easy handle to transport it, move it around your yard, store it away easily, take it to the courts, or maybe even on a vacation. And the next thing we're going to do is add our drill hole through our fence panel. Now you can keep this at its original length or you can cut it. You just need to make sure that it's at least the same width as both panels. So I'm going to center the hole as best I can and that's where I'm going to put my drill. So since we already have our drill out, we're going to go ahead and make our final two holes. Uh, so what you're going to do is turn the board over on its side and then that end where your hinges are, all right, we're going to move down about six inches and in about six inches and we're going to put our first, first hole there. Then move over about an inch or so and we'll put our second hole. Next thing you want to do is we're going to take some paracord and we're going to cut it to about the same length as just one of these halves. Then you're going to run both ends of your paracord through the front end into the back. On the side where your hinges are, take both ends of the cord together and tie a basic knot. This will create a loop that we will use to attach to our stand. Repeat this same process on the other side. So now that you have your basic boards set up and ready to be transported, let's go ahead and take a look at a few different ways that you can hang your board up and start practicing. The first way I'm going to show you is the build that I did in my backyard. And I did this as kind of a worst case scenario, meaning if you don't have some of the resources that we're talking about in your yard, you can still make this build possible following this method. The materials that you're going to need for this is one six foot heavy duty galvanized steel post, one heavy duty flip up storage hanger, two quarter inch wing nuts, one quarter inch thumb screws that are at least three inches long, 
one cam jam rope tightener, one quarter inch eye bolt, and one additional piece of scrap wood or board that is at least one foot long. So I'm gonna show you how to put this together first, and then I'm gonna show you a few other ways in case you have the available resources in your yard. Step one, you wanna find a level area in your yard to place your steel post into the ground. Make sure that there's enough space to swing your racket freely and safely. You also wanna consider what's behind the board and make sure that there are no windows or other breakable objects, just in case you miss the board completely. And before driving that post into the ground, make sure that the flat end will be facing towards where you intend on standing. Another good tip is that if you're having a difficult time setting that post into the ground, you can take a water hose and put it on a real light setting and then just lightly soak that area for about five minutes. This will allow the water to drip down into the ground, kind of soften up that area, so that'll make it much easier for you to set your post in place. Now that you have your post set, the next thing you're gonna do is attach that hanger to the board. And you're gonna attach it using that screw and wing nut. This is where you're gonna be placing the actual backboard up on its stand. Now we need to attach the remaining board to the top part of your T-post. And you're gonna fasten these together using your eye bolt and remaining thumb screw. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is take your cam jams that you picked up from the Home Depot, and we're gonna attach those to this post. And the way we're gonna do that is you're gonna pull out the loose slack so that, so that you have one open end. And then we're gonna thread that end through the eye. And then these things are pretty cool. Uh, the way to get it back going is you come from the back end of it, push it through, and then you use your thumb to bring the, bring the string down, set it into place, and now it'll catch on that groove and it, it'll really hold pretty good amount of weight. The next step is you're gonna lift your board and place it on its holder and then push it back on that top bar. Then take your cam jam rope tighteners and attach one end to each of the loops you just tied. You're now ready to start playing around with the different angles of your backboard. And to adjust the angles, take this loose tag end, hold it with your other hand, and then you're going to lift with your thumb, you lift that wheel up and that allows it to slide forward are backwards. And then when you're ready to just set it in place, make sure that this is down in the groove. Then you release your thumb and there you have it. Congratulations, your backboard is now complete. Now it's time to start practicing. Now from here, it is gonna take a little bit of adjustments and some getting used to. What I would do is start very slow and really focus on control. Your goal should be long rallies. And you might need to make some adjustments to the top board angle or the placement of the bottom board, depending on the type of shot you're trying to hit or the type of spin you're trying to create. Remember, if you want to make a build like this, I'm gonna add detailed instructions in that video description below. So now that you've seen the basic setup, let me show you a few other options that you might consider depending on the layout of your yard. A more ideal setup would be to set your post next to a driveway. And this will allow you to have far more control and vary the types of speed and spins that you're doing without making any adjustments to that bottom board. Another way to hang your board up would be to attach it to a wall or fence. And to do this, all you're gonna do is insert a screwable hook into the main section of the fence. And that will be the point where you attach your cam jam line to the fence. The lower part of the board conveniently fits nicely on this bottom section of fence. And this will still allow you the option to adjust that top board into different angles. And if you have a conveniently located tree, you could also use that instead of a T-post. And all you're gonna do for this is to take some of the extra cordage that you have, and you're gonna wrap the first section around the top part of the tree. Then you can attach your bottom hanger using two screws that are at least two inches long. Lift your board and place it on its holder. And now you have a simple backboard that is easy to set up or take down and is available for you whenever you feel like training. Now, before doing this, you definitely need to know that this isn't gonna be 100% foolproof, right? It will take some practice and it will take some time to get better. But if you do this, it will allow you the opportunity to get out and practice thousands of shots and really help retrain your body, develop control, and hopefully improve at tennis. So what are some adjustments that you would make to make this backboard better? Or what are some experiences that you've had with hitting against the backboard? Did it help or did it hurt? 
please share it with the community in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to click on that bell so you can be notified of any new videos that we post. And if you're interested in building a wall like this and you're brand new to tennis, go ahead and click on this video series here, which will walk you step by step through the entire process of really building good fundamentals from home. And if you're a more advanced player and you're trying to adjust your technique to be more similar to the pros, go ahead and click on this video series where I walk you through step by step of the progressions that you can do to retrain your swing just like the pros.